I'm about 30 feet underground right now at the Slack National Accelerator Laboratory in Northern California. Now down here in these tunnels, they're building one of the world's most powerful lasers, the LCLS2. Every day, thousands of people drive Highway 280 between San Francisco and Silicon Valley. But few realize they're driving directly over one of the most advanced pieces of technology on the planet. It's a device that pushes particles to nearly the speed of light and helps scientists unlock the origins of our universe. Before we go any further, let's get some acronyms out of the way. The LCLS, or LINAC Coherent Light Source, is a more than two mile long particle accelerator a device that speeds up charged particles and channels them into a beam. Think of it like a microscope with atomic resolution, allowing scientists to observe atoms and molecules in details never thought possible. LCLS is one of the most powerful devices of its kind in the world, allowing researchers to watch chemical reactions as they happen, observe the behavior of atoms inside stars, and produce live snapshots detailing the process of photosynthesis. It's the backbone of SLAC, the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, a joint laboratory between the university and the US Department of Energy. In operation since 1966, research at SLAC has netted four Nobel Prizes. It's helped scientists understand the transmissions of diseases like Zika, allowed them to study air pollution on a micro scale, and help develop stronger and lighter materials for the aerospace industry. But what do lasers have to do with any of that stuff? They help scientists create what they call molecular movies. These are snapshots of atoms and molecules in motion, shot within a few quadrillionths of a second and strung together like a film. LCLS is capable of making pulses all the way down below a femtosecond. A femtosecond is to a second, as a second is to the age of the universe. At this time scale, scientists can better understand how light and matter interact. This is where the very first things happen that electrons inside of molecules absorb energy from a light pulse, and then they transfer this energy into molecular vibrations or into motion. Scientists like James Cryan use these movies to capture groundbreaking experiments in chemistry, physics, human health, just about any scientific field you can think of. Back in 2009, Slack scientists fired up LCLS for the first time, its most powerful accelerator to date. LCLS can produce up to 120 pulses or movie frames per second, creating the brightest X-rays on the planet. But this world-class machine is about to get the mother of all upgrades. For the last five years, scientists at SLAC have been building its next generation particle accelerator to work alongside LCLS. LCLS-2 is a superconducting accelerator that when finished will be 10,000 times brighter than its predecessor. The laser will have the ability to produce up to 1 million pulses per second, opening the door for experiments that are impossible today. You think about a strobe light that goes off 120 times, you see one image. If it goes off a million times in a second, you get a much different image. So you can create a much better movie. The LCLS-2 upgrade stretches across about a third of the two plus mile stretch of the original LCLS tunnel. It all starts here at the superconducting electron accelerator, or the gun as it's sometimes called. This is the beginning of the electron's journey for LCLS-2. Okay. The heart of the gun is that big cylinder. Its job is to use flashes of light to produce a stream of electrons, or an electron beam. Those electrons get supercharged by a powerful radio frequency field on their way to the gun's exit. That field is so powerful, it produces about the same amount of heat as 80 microwaves on full power running continuously. That's what all those orange hoses are for. They pump water to keep the system cool. After exiting the gun, the electron beam travels through this string of 37 massive cryomodules, something you won't find on the original LCLS. So LCLS-1 is a normal conducting machine, so it's built with copper accelerating structures. The LCLS-2 accelerators are designed to run continuously, so it's a superconducting machine 
The cavities are made from niobium. So niobium is a material that when you cool it down to liquid helium temperature, it becomes superconducting. The cryomodules are kept at a temperature of two degrees above absolute zero, or minus 456 degrees Fahrenheit. And keeping them at that temperature is a massive operation in itself. A team runs this cryo plant above ground that delivers super cooled helium to those cryo modules down below. This is where we keep our uh, helium in a gas form. So we have six storage of 110 cubic meter each. We have a total inventory of about four tons of helium for the system. Next stop for the beam is what's known as the switch yard. This is where the electrons from LCLS and LCLS2 get redirected to different lines, depending on what type of experiment they're being used for. Earlier, we were up at the start of the line and we saw that superconducting electron accelerator. Now we're about two miles away in what's known as undulator hall. This is about 100 meters of alternating magnets that convert that beam into x-rays. The magnets, spaced just a few millimeters apart, are arranged in a pattern that pushes the electrons into a wiggling motion. Yes, that is the technical term. That undulating motion forces the electrons to emit some of their energy in the form of x-rays, which bunch together and reinforce each other, creating a boost in x-ray power, that coherent light source. Well, you can imagine an incandescent light bulb might be 60 watts, but it's just radiating in any direction across a very wide spectrum of colors. Coherent radiation has a very well-defined direction, almost as if you know, you're able to harness all of that light and focus it into a very, very small spot. And precision is everything. It takes an entire team working 24-7 to ensure the undulators are perfectly tuned. The entire beam goes through here with five micron precision. And so that's five microns out of the 130 meter length of this undulator hall. And so, you know, better than a part per million in terms of precision and alignment, probably one of the straightest objects in the world. Like other parts of Slack, undulator hall gets an upgrade for LCLS2. Its original line of magnets is replaced by two separate lines. The line on the right generates hard X-rays. Those are X-rays with shorter wavelengths that can probe smaller structures, particularly useful in material and biological sciences. The line on the left generates soft X-rays with longer wavelengths, which scientists can use to study energy and chemical reactions. And now that we've got our X-rays, scientists further down the line can make those molecular movies. I'm gonna jump up and down and be so excited. We're gonna enable experiments that I've been wanting to do for years and years. Dr. Cryan works in what's known as Near Experimental Hall, our next stop on the line. This facility is broken up into four main areas known as hutches. This one has some kind of cool stuff in it if we can duck in here real quick. Within these hutches, scientists can swap out different experiments related to everything from molecular and atomic physics to biology. And this is where the LCLS2 and its one million pulses per second become a game changer. It's such a higher rep rate that we'll all of a sudden take experiments that we say that's not feasible and say it's doable and it's doable in a matter of days. This ability to observe processes on different timescales will open up new doors for scientific research, allowing scientists to answer questions they've been trying to solve for years. How does energy transfer happen inside molecular systems? How does charge transfer happen? Once we understand some of these principles, we can start to apply them to understand how can we do artificial photosynthesis? How can we better understand photovoltaic devices? How can we build better solar cells? I think that it's absolutely fair to say that LCLS2 will usher in a new era of science. All right, so this is it. We've finally reached the last stop of this incredibly long X-ray laser. This is called FEH, or FAR Experimental Hall. They're also running some experiments here, and we're gonna go take a look. At the very end of LCLS, you'll find four more hutches. These ones are color-coded and more fancy acronyms. So this is MFX, which is the Macromolecular Femtosecond Crystallography Hutch. 
And here we look at uh, proteins, viruses, biological material in air. This is really cool. Behind me, there's four lasers in here. Now those lasers generate beams that are directed through, there's a series of optics right there that you can see. After getting directed through those optics, they pass through this black tube here into this chamber. Also known as the MEC, or Matter in Extreme Condition Hutch. Now in that chamber, the scientists can use those lasers to simulate all sorts of extreme conditions. Anything from the core of the Earth to the surface of the Sun. After generating these extreme conditions, researchers use X-rays from LCLS to capture images of how materials inside the chamber react in those exact moments. We can focus on planetary interiors. We can focus on um, impact or collision events. So maybe the moon forming impact simulation. We're generating high density plasmas, much like are in the, the interior of stars. And we can watch what is happening on a very short time scale to these very hot, dense plasmas. We also focus on a portfolio of material science applications. So considering materials at extreme conditions, what happens to the surface of a re-entry vehicle? While most scientists at SLAC are eagerly awaiting the activation of LCLS-2, scientists here at FEH are looking even further into the future. Often referred to as the upgrade to the upgrade, LCLS-2 High Energy is a project that will expand energy reach on the new line. It means we can penetrate deeper into samples. We can look at more complicated materials. Think about the Earth's core made of iron. In total, the upgrade for LCLS-2 runs about a billion dollars. Now, in just a couple weeks, scientists are hoping to cool down those cryomodules that we saw earlier and then produce their first electron beam with LCLS-2. Then in summer of 2022, hopefully their first X-ray, which they'll call their first big light event. That's going to be just in time for the 60th anniversary of Slack. I'm Andy Altman. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the future.